Hello and welcome to the Art of Communication podcast with me, Robin Kermode. For more information on my online public speaking masterclass, visit robinkermode.com. Hello, this is Sian Hansen and I'm here with Robin Kermode. Hello. Welcome to this episode of the Art of Communication podcast, How to Ace a Video Call. So what do you do to prep your mind? Well, what we want to do is we want to make our face look relaxed and we want to make our mind alive. And you can do the same thing in one go, which is what actors do before they go on stage. It's a very simple thing, which is to stretch your face. So you stretch it wide, a big wide face, and you can't see this because... <laughs> This is effectively just audio. Big wide face and then a tiny little scrunched up face and a big wide face and a scrunched up face. Listeners, he's looking very odd. It's what actors do before they go on stage. And the reason is it relaxes the facial muscles. It also particularly relaxes the eyes because on a video call, we're going to be seen a lot and we want our eyes to be nice and relaxed. You always talk about centering your voice and making sure your voice is in the right place. Mm. Is there a breathing exercise that we should be doing? Well, you can do the two things. We want to get our voice nice and relaxed and we want us to be relaxed. And sometimes people are a bit nervous on these calls anyway. So there's a very simple thing you can do. If you put your hand below your belly button and you breathe in for a count of three and out for a count of six, it's really important that you breathe out twice as long as you breathe in. Why is that? Because when you breathe in, like that, it's a kind of fight or flight nervous breath in, but the relaxation breath of the breath out actually calms you. So you want to breathe out twice as long as you breathe in. Gosh, you learn something new every day, <laughs> don't you? So you've woken up your face and you've done your breathing, but it must be important where you set up the call in your house. Well, yeah, because a lot of people are working from their bedrooms now. If they're having to work from home, if they're flat sharing, that kind of thing. So obviously you want to make sure that you don't want an unmade bed and this kind of thing in the background doesn't look great. And you don't want bits of half-eaten cornflakes and things around. <laughs> <laughs> so the shot wants to be clean, I think. So you'd set it up clean in something that's uncluttered, I imagine. But what would you do in terms of the lighting? You see, I've been on calls recently where the lighting is just a disaster. Well, they say on filming that lighting is everything. If you get really good lighting, you can make video look like film, but only if you have great lighting. I think most people don't think about lighting, to be honest. Well, I have been on some calls recently where someone sat in front of a window and their face is so dark. The window is behind them. Yeah. They have, of course, this big bright light behind them. Of course, it's going to make their face by default be darker. Well, obviously, you want to avoid a big light behind you. You can also have somebody sitting where the light is coming on the side. So one side of their face is completely whitened out. And yeah. The other side of their face is in darkness. Yeah. That's not great. I bought a very simple lighting rig that you can buy online and it's a circular light. It's got a little stand with it. And in the middle of it, you can put your phone or your tablet or whatever it can clip on inside and then what happens is you get this lovely circular light because you want light from all directions you don't just want from one angle so what are people used to do in the old days they got something like an angle poise lamp and they sort of shot it at them yeah. like it was a stage light but it's just coming from one side what you want is nice soft light coming all the way around you and the one I've got and it wasn't very expensive it has a dimmer switch on it so you can adjust it depending on how much light there is in the room so you can make yourself look about 20 years younger is well, what you're that's, saying that's, are you saying I need to <laughs> maybe <laughs> I do, I probably do. <laughs> what about the old trick of having light bouncing up on your face? Funny, that's exactly what happened. The first time I had my actor's headshots taken, and I'd never had my shots taken before, and this very good photographer, who, funnily enough, is still my photographer, and he said, right, okay, Robbie, what I'm going to do is I've got my car here, and you stand one side of the car, I'll stand the other side of the car, and I want you to lean on the rooftop and look at me, right? So put your hands on the rooftop mm. and look across. But what he did was he unrolled some tin foil and he scrunched it up, and he laid that on the roof of his car, and that bounced this lovely sort of speckledy light underneath and when I saw the shots I thought it's really good you had no idea that I'm literally <laughs> so very, very high tech very, very high, high tech. tech yeah but sometimes these things work look you, you know. could try it you could try it couldn't you so lighting is everything get but your think lighting about, right think about lighting yeah. and think about it beforehand don't join the call and then rush around the house to get the best lighting or pull the curtains have you been to those calls where people lift up their laptop and think oh sorry it's a bit rubbish here and they keep moving around they keep moving around it's very disconcerting yeah. so you can always use some sort of photo booth app on your laptop to test it out do a test call, yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. Now, much more important is what are you wearing? Well, can you see, if you're working from home, can you wear different things at home than you would at the office? Oh, In other words, you, can you be yeah, more relaxed? Yeah. Like dress down Friday? I mean, not too dressed down. I'm not a fan of the T-shirt, I have to say. I well, think a that collar... Depends on, that depends on your industry, doesn't it, of course. So I would normally wear a suit for work. If I go into an office, I tend to wear a suit. I don't often wear a tie, but I tend to wear a suit jacket or a jacket of some sort. Now, on a video call, I tried to putting a jacket on the other day and I thought, I look a bit overdressed really because everyone <laughs> knows I'm working from home. So it, yeah. comes, it looks a bit ridiculous, but I would still wear a shirt. 
Have you spoken to professional people online, like doctors well, or I bankers had, or something? Yeah, I had a video conference call the other day with my bank manager, and actually, shirt and tie, no jacket. I was so shirt and tie, so still very formal. Yeah, it was quite formal. And how would you have felt if he was wearing a hoodie? Oh, completely different. <laughs> oh, I hadn't thought about that. It matters, actually. Why? It matters what they're wearing. I did one of those doctor consultations on a video the other day, mm. and the doctor was in a hoodie and a T-shirt. But he gave me excellent advice. Actually, it was a really nice conversation. It wasn't as formal. I felt I could say more. So you didn't distrust the doctor because no, no, he or she not was at all. A t-shirt. No, not at all. Not at all. But I do think there's a line. I still think you have to look relatively professional. I had a a call the other day and it was very sweet where the lady I was talking to was chatting away on the call and then this lovely man came in and gave her a cup of tea and said, oh, a cup of tea for you, love. And she said, thank you very much. And I didn't say anything and I thought, well, it looked like her father, so I thought that was fine. And then three minutes later he came in and said, cup of tea, love. And I thought he just brought her a cup of tea and I thought, oh, dear. And then about three minutes later, he brought in with another cup of tea. So these teas were piling up on the table. And she said, I'm so sorry, my father has dementia. And of course, these are the challenges that people have when they work from home, because we have have family there uh, that we're looking after, we're often carers. Then we have dogs barking. And then we have children screaming and demanding this and the other. Then you have the doorbell ringing the Amazon delivery person. I have to say, I was thrilled, but I was on quite a long call the other day. And about half an hour in... This fabulous cat jumped up on his desk, a huge, fluffy cat, and I thought that was terrific. He would now, jump to Blofeld, were you? Is no. Blofeld no, the Bond villain with the cat? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> but the cat looked like that. <laughs> but just from a woman's point of view, I've discovered that actually the perfect outfit, if it's appropriate in terms of the weather and the geography you're in, is a polo neck, a turtleneck, because you look sharp mm-hmm. and together, but you still look informal. And it probably and disappears sh- a little bit as well, in a way. You don't notice it too much. You, you don't notice sharp. it too much. Or a statement necklace makes you look, or earrings, makes you look like you've got up and you've made a choice. Yes, it's also probably quite quick, isn't it, throwing a polo neck on? Because often what I find is people say, oh, should we go to video now? Yeah. And, and because I'm working from home, I think, oh, I, I should, should be looking smarter, maybe. So I think maybe something quick is quite good to have to hand. Assuming you're going to do this video call on a laptop, mm. what's the angle? Because I've seen a lot of people get the angle wrong. Should we look at some of the shots? The shot that I see most often is what I call the nostril shot, <laughs> which, which is where the laptop is obviously on the table. They've got their arms on the table and they lean in towards it too close, far closer than they would if you were actually in person. They'd never be that close to you in person. But they're somehow almost kissing the screen, as they were. <laughs> but suddenly you have a, this awful shot up their nostril. It's not a great look. It's not a great look. I have somebody who... I don't know why they do it. They kind of hug the laptop. They've got their arm a, a bit round the laptop, which slightly obscures the camera. So you either have a hairy arm or a really good shot of their armpit. Or That's not a good look, <laughs> is it? But what about people who cut their heads off? You know, in the old days when we used to take pictures yes. and you send them off to the chemist to get them delivered. Yeah. They, they'd come back a week later yeah. and you find you cut everybody's head off. Yes. <laughs> Does that happen? Yeah, I think sometimes that's deliberate where they don't want their whole head in the shot. They're holding their phone halfway down. or Is that because they don't want the receding hairline to the I don't know. No, <laughs> actually, that's all they're showing you. Oh, right. How weird is that? <laughs> that's very weird. But I do think our listeners would appreciate some advice. How do you set it? Is it on your desktop and you're sitting far away? What's the distance between you and the camera? I think it should be the equivalent of what it would be if it was a person. So normally what happens, you're about a forearm distance between you is probably about right. So I would have your head about a forearm's distance away from the camera. Right. It's probably about right. But the other thing I think is important, a very simple technique, if you lift the laptop and you put it on a pile of books or some, or a little stool or something like that, and you have the camera at eye height, it's a much more flattering angle for you than if you have it looking up. I think that's probably a good compromise. Yes, there's something that, that I saw on a call the other day, which is where people have a laptop screen that has the keyboard on, but then they have a big screen behind. And I was talking to this man on the phone, and I thought, where's he looking? Because he was looking way above the camera. He wasn't looking into the lens or looking at me. He was looking at a massive, great screen. And I said, can you just try, look, as I was doing some coaching with him, I said, can you just try looking at your laptop screen as opposed to the big screen? And I said, now it looks like you're actually looking at me. Oh, and that's important in a call, isn't it? It's it important to, you that want you're connecting. I mean, of course, what you can't do all the time is to look into the camera. Because actually, if you look into the camera, it's even better. Your desire is to look at the person on the screen. So you're looking at their face to read their body language and looking into their eyes. But by default, you can't look actually into the camera. But at least on a laptop, they're closer 
than they are on a monitor that's a long way away. That must create a human connection through an inhuman medium. For many years, I used to coach the top auctioneers in the world, and I used to say to them, if you look into the lens of the internet camera, because obviously in auctions now, 50% of their sales are coming on the internet. So I said to them, if you actually look into the camera, directly into the camera, and you just twinkle down the lens, you'll get an extra bid. And it's amazing how it worked. So I think that if you... If you're coming to the end of a section and you really want to make an impact with the audience that you're talking to on a video call, just lift your eyes and just do the last little bit straight down the lens. It really helps. Yes. Now I'm thinking about it. That really would because it signals the end of a conversation Mm. and the beginning of a new one. Actually, that brings me on to chairing the call. When you go on a video call, you're either a participant or the chair, Mm. assuming there's a chair. What advice would you give to people chairing the meeting on a video call? Is it different to normal? I think it is different to normal. I think it's not that dissimilar actually to a conference audio call. But what it needs is the chair to be really, really clear at the beginning. Because the cleaner and the clearer the chair is, you're setting an expectation that everyone else is going to be focused. So if you have a woolly start, you're going to have a woolly call. You know the way that you talk to a client maybe from the lift to your office, that kind of bit. And that's the bit you often have on these calls where you're waiting. Have you had that thing where you're waiting? Oh, you're waiting for people to join or figure out how to unmute. Yes. What do you do? Do you just sit there drinking your tea? Well, it's really eggy. I mean, it's it's eggy. And I would have thought it's the chair's responsibility to just keep a nice little informal rolling conversation going on until everybody's joined. Well, I think it is just as the host would if they were hosting in their house. You know, if they have a dinner party and people come come round to the party at their house, people come round. You're not going to say, so I'm not going to say anything until everyone's here. I think a chair should do a roll call call don't you so we all know who's on the call it is a roll call but i think what it should be is a welcome to everybody oh. there's a school roll call which is kind of a, a bit <laughs> yeah. you know, right uh, present and correct i'm here I, i'm here madam i'm here sir that kind yeah. of thing but rather like if you're giving a speech it's great to mention all the stakeholders in the room if you've got a, a room full of doctors and teachers for example it's quite good to every now and then to say so of course if you're a teacher this implies to you and if you're a doctor this is relevant to you and then yes. you go oh that's me and the yeah. same way that i think it's good if a chair says oh and on the call we have uh Sian, we have judith whatever these names this is great so I think when your name is mentioned it makes you feel special so this this is good yes and it pulls you into the meeting Mm. and you think right now it's going to start yeah we've had the equivalent of the lift to the meeting room which is the the pre-chat and then it's very important the chair goes right okay now we're going to start the meeting and then there's a different focus and off it goes and now you're in the meeting these video calls I'm finding anyway, a little bit shorter and more productive than a face-to-face meeting. You get quite a lot done in a short space of time, as long as it's chaired well. Well, video calls are more tiring than a normal meeting. Mm. And I think they're more tiring for two reasons. One, you can't get up and walk away. So in a normal meeting, if you're there for a five-hour meeting, you will, obviously, well, a five-hour meeting, you'll probably break for lunch. But if you're having, say, a two-hour meeting, you could easily be there and you'd get up and you'd get yourself a glass of water or a cup of coffee or a biscuit or something and you come back and and nobody thinks this is weird. Mm. But if you suddenly leave your screen, people think, that's very rude. She just got up and walked away, you know. So I think this is tiring because you, you feel you have to be there. And you also feel you have to have constant eye contact straight down the lens. In life, we never have eye contact for two hours with another human being. It's completely weird. Mm. What you have to look like you're paying attention. Is that what you're saying? You do. So I think you have to give yourself an excuse to break the eye contact. So what I would suggest is you have an old-fashioned pad of paper in front of you with a pencil or a bar or whatever in front of you. And then you can listen. Every now and then you look down and you write notes. But it's very important it's in front of the screen. If it's off to the side, it just looks like you're checking your mobile for texts. Yes. And it doesn't look good. Doesn't at all. look good, no. no. But even if you're writing your grocery list, you have a break for your eyes. Because you... you need a break for your eyes, oh. definitely. And banish phones to the other side of the room and turn them off so you're oh. not tempted. No, you've got to turn them off. And you know what it's like if you're in close up, if your head is in close up and you hear a ping and your eyes flick down to the left to look at the phone, <laughs> everybody knows <laughs> Everybody's you're, you're seen not you quite concentrated. So I think it's much better to turn your phones off and also stop emails pinging because I've been on calls where there's ping ping every time an email comes yes, in. Yes, you should really shut annoying. it down, shouldn't you? You shut should shut it down. down. And if it's also, especially if you're going to share screens, you don't want emails popping up. No, that could be a disaster, yeah. couldn't it, if they could see it. I want to know, and this is something I suffer from, in a normal meeting, it's really easy to catch the chair's eye yes. and say, you want to say something, so that you're not interrupting. And I find on these video calls at the moment, it's difficult to sort of butt in and make a point. And the chair hasn't got the same ability to catch your eye. I first tried by putting my hand up. <laughs> That's laughing at school. Isn't it? I'm so first of all, you school. have the roll call. To try and get attention. Um, but what would you do? Well, 
I think leaning forward is one thing because if you imagine you've got quite a few people on a call, mm. so the images are quite small, mm. but if you notice somebody leaning in, <laughs> just the head leaning in, it draws your attention. I think that's probably better than putting your hand up. I think chairs should be particularly vigilant on video calls to see who needs to speak. And if somebody hasn't said something for 20 minutes, actually, I would say, has anybody got a point who hasn't spoken yet? Yes. Who would like to say something? But that's chairing well, isn't and that's, it? And I also think it's incredibly important on a video call to keep your point short. How many people go on and on and on and you can't interrupt on a video call? No. I use the headline sandwich always on video calls or on audio calls, actually, particularly. You say your main point, you give your examples and your reasons, and you repeat it at the end. So, for example, if someone said to me, you know, what's the most important thing you'd work on with my team? I would probably say, well, I think voice is the most important area I'd work on for these reasons. So ultimately, yes, I think voice is the most important area I'll work on. Oh, I see. And it's very clear that I finished and then you hand the ball back because what you don't really want is lots of overlapping. Listen, how do you keep your energy up on calls like this? Sometimes, you know, I'm fading. How do you keep your energy up? There's no simple answer. You can stretch. You can sit forward. You can put a bit of tension in your upper thighs because you can't move your upper body too much. No. But you can shift a little bit in your seat, rather like in an airline seat. You can wiggle your toes and do something like that. But unfortunately, that is just a mental thing. You always talk about having a kind of twinkle in your eye. It would be hard to keep that up all the time, but it's about this energy, isn't it? It's a lightness to it. So keeping the energy up is hard to do, but the one thing you can control is what you're eating or drinking. Sorry, eating. Eating. Okay, obviously not eating. <laughs> not eating, no. But look at times of day. You could be having a conversation with somebody who's in their night time or in their early evening and I'm having breakfast. Yep, Are you, you, yeah. Oh, oh, look. <laughs> no. Oh, you're saying no eating. No. Cup of tea? I can't. You can, of course you can have a cup of tea. I can't be sitting there can with, I have my a of, with my bowl of cornflakes while somebody else is having a whiskey. It's just weird. <laughs> so you can have a drink but don't eat. Nobody wants to watch anyone in close-up eating, really. Do you? <laughs> no, really? I'm, no, I suppose it's definitely not on a video. Call. No, I mean the sound of people eating, but also the watching people eat that close. It's not a pleasant prospect, to be honest. OK, but we should be aware, shouldn't we, that somebody's maybe close to going to bed while you're just waking up. Be sensitive to their energy levels because they mm. will be different. If you're heading towards the end of your day and somebody else is in the middle of their day and they're rolling along good energy level, mm. you coming on going, so, hello, right, it's, it doesn't... It doesn't match. So I yeah. think we need to be aware of time zones. What about this whole thing about seeing people's homes? You know, there's... <laughs> I know you I do know. get inside. We're seeing a lot of people's homes at the moment, their bedrooms, their kitchens. Mm. You know, we talked earlier about their animals. You've got kids coming in and out and flatmates. How do you control all of that? Well, it's funny, isn't it? Because it depends on how much set dressing you want to do. Sometimes I've done video calls with people and I thought, this isn't a hello shoot. <laughs> and they've kind of done the whole room up. I had a call with a client the other day. He had one rather nice oil painting, I have to say, but right above his head. That was a right. blank wall and one painting. And he said, as you can see, Robin, he said, I've gone for the reassuringly expensive look. <laughs> I said, does that picture actually live there? And he went, no, I put it there. <laughs> The point of the call. Well, I thought even better was I was on a call with somebody the other day. He was sitting there and behind him was a huge oil painting of himself. Sorry, himself? Himself, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was absolutely fantastic. Nobody has an oil painting of themselves yeah. unless they're landed gentry or something. Yeah, or yeah, there was an oil painting of himself. To the fourth earl of somebody. Yes, right? probably, yes. But he's kept a low profile until this moment. Or maybe he's completely self-made. You think he wants to be the fourth lord. Maybe that's what it is. But I tell you what, I do want something. A blank wall behind somebody makes me nervous because I know they're at home mm. and I'd quite like to see a bit of their personality actually. A little yeah, bit. Yeah, a little bit of their personality. But it wants to be clean. I think the most important thing is that it doesn't want to be too distracting because you don't want to think, what is that in the background? No, that's what true. What is that? No, no. that's true. Because yeah, no. if it's a piece of sculpture on the wall, what's, what's Yeah, that? make sure there's no dying pot plants or anything yeah, And also like laundry that. and this oh. sort of bits yeah, and pieces. We don't want that. Okay, so we're coming to the end of the call. Hopefully it's been sharp and succinct and the chair is doing well and we can all feel the call is coming to an end and the chairman says thank you everybody that's the end what do we do when we come off the call I made a big mistake the other day is I wave so you waved goodbye I waved goodbye so so far we've had a roll call you put your hand up in class and you wave goodbye (laughs) what's going on I have to say I got a lot of WhatsApp messages afterwards, you know, making a joke out of me waving goodbye. So how do you end a call? What do you do? Well, what you don't want to do is to do this thing of bye, 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 bye. Right? We don't <laughs> no. want lots of byes. No. I think we want to be quite finished. We want to go, OK, it's been a really good meeting. Great to see you all. Thank you very much. Goodbye. Now, at the moment of saying goodbye, the screen, of course, doesn't disappear, unlike where you put a phone down. So you've got to reach somewhere to find the off switch. And most people are going goodbye. And then their face is going, 
where's the off switch? Where's the off? And it kind of all falls apart. So I think know where the off switch is. Know is where good. the hang up or the, uh, shutting down the video is. Yeah. Yes. And there's something that some people do, which is very odd, almost as if they reach across the screen to turn it off. The last vision you get of them is this hairy armpit. And very um, unattractive. It's very unattractive. It's very strange. <laughs> so you've finished and you sit back in your chair. You've probably been nervous. Mm. So you're quite glad it's over or you're feeling a little like you need a break. What do you do after the call? Well, you might have got a sale, so you might feel excited. You might yeah. want to put some music on and have a dance. Oh, oh, <laughs> so just might, dance it out. You might, you? Yeah, simply the best. Or whatever. <laughs> I don't know what I mean. You might want to do that. The danger with working from home, which a lot of us are doing now, is that we can spend hours and hours on the laptop. And of course, we've got to do two things. One, we've got to relax our eyes because mm. eyes can get very strained mm. with lots of this. And mm. physically, we want to stretch and move around. So whether it's a bit of yoga or going for a walk outside, if you're allowed outside, but a bit of movement is definitely helps. And what exercise can you do for your eyes? Well, the most simple one is a very old fashioned one, which is where you pull one finger up in front of your nose, maybe about a foot in front of your face. You focus on the finger to so make the eyes focus close. And then you look at something way in the distance, maybe outside the window, maybe a tree in the distance. So you focus on the tree and then back onto the finger close by, onto the tree in the distance, back onto the finger close by. And it forces the eye to go long and short. And once you've done that five or six times, mm. then get the palms of your hands and put them over each eye mm. and hold it there. Just mm. press gently to relax the eye and hold them there for one minute. It's a really nice way to relax the eyes between calls. So you need some space between calls, do you? I mean, you don't want to bunch them all up. You'd space them out. I just think you want to give yourself a break because just physically to move. But the other thing is that if you are working from home, it's often nice to have the human contact that a video call can give us. And if you push them all in the first bit of the day, so by 10.30 they're all finished, then you've got the rest of the day, you don't see anyone. So it might be good, I think, to spread them out a little bit. And at the end of the day, I'm finding that what I do is I make an impromptu video call to somebody who maybe I haven't heard from for a while, living on their own. Like um, a, fr- a family friend. Or a family friend yeah. or, or a colleague who I hadn't spoken to that week. And I'll just give them a call and it actually won't be about work at all. Mm. It will just be checking in, how are you, you know, maybe share a story or something. I, I, that's a really nice that's way nice thing to do and it's for family or for a colleague as you say actually yeah because i think in times like this you know reaching out a little bit a little bit of kindness a little bit of attention yeah. is welcome oh i think it's lovely it's a really great thing and i think funny enough after a while we'll get so used to this i wonder if we'll ever commute again it's been talked about are we going to jump on planes in the same way we used to is it going to be more video calls and less coming into the office you just never know you never know do no, you no but there is something about face to face but maybe we'll all get really good at these and then we'll make it work that has been a fascinating conversation thank you so much it's goodbye for me and it's goodbye for me for more information on my online public speaking masterclass visit robinkermo.com.